So, Edgar, um, I will be happy to give a floor for you. Um, the, I guess you will introduce yourself and your uh, paper. Uh, I, I will just tell everyone for the presenters, we will have uh, 15 or maybe even 20 minutes for uh, the uh, presentation and five, 10 minutes for discussion as we have only, I guess, three uh, presenters. So we will have more time for discussion. So uh, take your time. Um, and I guess I will tell you uh, two minutes beforehand when time is over. Uh, so Edgar, please. Uh, Спасибо большое. Меня зовут Эдгар Деметро. Это мое имя, моя фамилия Товар Гарсия. And я доктор экономических наук в Университете Барселоне. I will be presenting in English because I was preparing my presentation in English. And therefore, now let me share my screen. Let me know everything is okay. If you can see my presentation, please. Uh, and let me know if you can hear me correctly. It's okay, Dasha? Yes, everything is okay. Well, the title of my, my article, my paper, my research is Binaural Music and Educational Outcomes. Evidence from Longitudinal Panel Data and Quasi-Experimental Data. Uh, I have to tell you that because of time, there are many details about this research that I will not be able to explain accurately. Uh, nevertheless, I will tell you uh, about one paper that I was following to, for the procedure, for the methods, and, and, and something that I am still using here. And in addition, I would like to tell you that this paper is already under review, so probably uh, will be published soon. And therefore, you can know the details about this, the, this research. Um, let me start telling you, for those who are professors, it's very clear, at least in my country, in Mexico, the last time I was teaching in Russia was the year 2016 and was not so problematic. But after that, I came to Mexico and with this new generation, with millennial and post-millennial generation, actually here is very, very difficult to gain and to get attention of the students. And in the year 2020, when the pandemic all right, in Mexico, uh, the lockdown started in March in 2020. Well, to try to, to gain and keep attention of the students just after the coronavirus in the online class. And even today with this kind of private teaching models or, or this moment with the post-COVID uh, teaching process, it's very difficult to find, uh, to, to keep the attention of the students. It's a major concern. Obviously, in the classroom, in the face-to-face -face teaching, you have many didactic tools to, to get attention of the students. But online is more complicated. And at that moment, and, and I will explain you a little bit why this is a natural experiment. And at that moment, I was thinking, what can I do to don't lose my students, right? And I was looking for music because it's very well known, the Mozart effect. So I was playing music in 2020 at the very beginning of the 2020, and in the second part of the 20, or, or a little bit, I was using classical music as a background music to keep and maintain the attention of my students. Nevertheless, actually, very soon, I was I found the binary binary music in social networks, and I just started using this this music as background music in my in my classroom, my online classroom, in 2020, and I found that the performance, the academic achievements on my students was really better. Yeah, when I was using the music, I just was noted, it's my opinion at that moment, that my students were doing a better job with the music than without, without the music. From this paper, when I, I was using the, the music, I, was, I paid particular attention to this article by these three authors, and they showed evidence with experiment, in my case, it's a natural experiment, squash experiment, but I was following this paper, they use an experiment and they found that when they are using classic music for lectures, actually the students learn better. And this is the reason that at the beginning I was using classical music. Then later, in my opinion, binaural music was better in 2020. As a consequence, in 2021, I decided that my natural experiment will be more formal to systemize all this data, all this information, to test a uh, 
a, a, a couple of questions, yeah? Therefore, given this background, given what happened to me in 2020, I, resize, I decided to start with this general question about binaural music, yeah? Does binaural music really work? And now let me tell you just quickly what I mean, what we know, what that means to this binaural beat. And let me tell you that binaural beats occurs when two sounds of different frequencies are processed by the brain creating the sense of the third sound. Well, you can use it, and they say that it's like a music. Actually, it's not a music, in my opinion, it's more or less like a, a sound. And as the technology say, there are two different sounds that your brain is processing as only one sound. And I decided to test the impact of this binaural music on the educational outcomes of my students. And because of the coronavirus, and because I'm telling you, I just decided to use the music to gain the attention of my students. And it was working in 2020. And in 2021, I decided to do it formally, collecting all, all this kind of data. Um, let me tell you a little bit more about the binaural beats that they were discovered by this guy, Henry Skelman Dobb, sorry for the pronunciation, not, not sure how to pronounce his name. And binaural beats was discovered in 1839, so many, many years ago. Then these binaural beats were, te were tested by this guy, Gerald Oster, in the Encelograph. And what they mentioned, what we know, what, what we know about these binaural beats. First, that uh, we know that the brain relies electric impulse, brain waves, and these determine the states of, uh, of conscience, yeah, it's the state of consciousness. And usually, our brain is in four um, states of conscience that in the literature we call delta, theta, alpha, and beta, but I also found in the literature the gamma frequency. What these binaural bees are doing these two songs in one song that they, is what they are doing well they can stimulate your brain your brain waves to move from one of these states to other state and what people is doing now in social networks what they uh, try to do is using this binaural bit to move from the beta state to the alpha state and they are doing like this because we know that the beta state is the the, the, the most popular in modern society, but this beta state is correlated with tension, anxiety, and stress. By contrast, alpha, the alpha state, is, cor is correlated with a receptive mind, uh, will help you to, uh, with, with focus, with attention, to try to learn. And therefore, what they are doing is using these binaural beats in music to help people to move from this beta state to this alpha state that will help you to get focused. Well, this idea, in education, there is not evidence to this moment, not for the best of my knowledge. To, uh, there is not empirical and, and uh, scientific evidence of this is happening. Nevertheless, there is a lot of evidence in other fields. In medicine, for instance, people is using this to control for hyper, hyper, hypertension, for surges, for in medicine, they, are, they have been using this music in, in several fields, and there is evidence that it's working, that actually is helping people to relax and to get focused. But in education and in other uh, areas of social science, I, didn't, I did not find any evidence for that. Therefore, I think that this was a good idea to formalize my natural experiments and to test the impact of this binaural base in educational performance. Accordingly, in 2021, still under the conditions of the pandemic, 73 students were participating in my natural experiment. They provide me 700, uh, 707 observations in 16 points in time. Therefore, I had panel data. And here also, I have to tell you very quickly what I'm doing. The idea is very simple. There are many details that obviously later I can explain. So I was in 2021. I had only three groups. Two groups are about microeconomics. I have the group A and group B, and the other group is about international economies. What I was doing? Well, using the, mu the music as a, the treatment of the experiment, in one partial of the, uh, of the semester, and I didn't use the music in the second part of the partial. Uh, let me explain you a little bit more because we'll be, we will be better for you. Here we're teaching in, in one semester, and the semester is divided in three partials. Therefore, in partial one, 
I was using the music in my lecture in the growth of microeconomics A and international economies. And in partial two, I was not using the music. And by contrast, I was using the music for microeconomics B. In other words, when I was lecturing in partial one, I was using music and in partial two, I was not using music just to test if actually there is an impact of binaural music on quizzes. After each lecture, students have to answer a quiz and I would like to know they are improving the, the, the quiz scores after, uh, after the music. Now, uh, and please, um, I, I will ask you not to Google the, the video now. I will put the, the link to the video in the chat, but please don't go now to the, to the link to the video where you will find the, uh, the music that I was using. There are many, many options. Yeah, you go to YouTube, Spotify, and so on, and you will find many options of people who is producing this, um, this music, this binaural business music. And therefore, uh, given my discussion with my colleagues, I think that this video that I'm telling you, here will be easier for you to remember this face. Yeah, this is the, the video that I'm using with the music that I'm using as background music when I was uh, lecturing to my students. Don't, don't Google for this now, later you will have time. And what I was doing first with my data, just analyzing descriptive statistics. And given this descriptive statistics, I would like that you pay particular attention to microeconomics A. And then later I will explain what is happening here. Just comparing mean, mean comparison. When I was using the music with this uh, group, micro A, you will see that by contrast, it seems that when I'm using the treatment, I mean, when I'm using the music, the average score of quizzes is less than without the music, against my hypothesis. But in microeconomics B, it's, very, it's clear that when I'm using the treatment, when I'm using the music, they're actually improving the quizzes scores. Then don't forget I had micro A, micro B, and I was comparing between groups. And when the uh, microeconomics B is the control group, I mean this without music, there is evidence again suggesting that the treatment is useful to improve the results in quizzes. But when the group A again is the control and B is listening to the music, it's not clear, yeah? The p-value is slightly high. And therefore, in the case of macroeconomics, in particular in the case of macroeconomics A, the results are mixed. To this moment, just analyzing the script to the statistics. In the case of international economies, this group number three, by contrast, it's very, very clear that with the music, with the treatment, they were improving the quiz scores a lot. Yes, yeah? statistically significant. Well, when I explained to students what, what, what I was doing with the music, they gave me the, the writing consent to use this data. And also they answered a background questionnaire. And with this background questionnaire, I was able to use control variables there are variables measuring concerns about internet connection, uh, language concerns, um, about the coronavirus concerns, and so on. Well, I was able to use regression analysis, using panel data, random effects to, to include um, tiny invariant variables, and also because it's recommended by the Hausmann test. And I was just using regression analysis to test the impact of the treatment, the music, on the quiz scores, given my, my control variables. Therefore, I had five models two for micro A, micro B, and then to compare between these two groups about microeconomics, and finally about international economies. The results are here. And again, I found that in the case of this class, microeconomics A, it seems that the music has a negative impact. As I mentioned, I will tell you what is happening here later, yeah? But by contrast, microeconomic B is very clear there is a positive impact. When comparing between groups, it seems that the treatment, the music has also a positive impact. And in the case of international economics, it's very, very clear that yeah, it's a positive impact. What these numbers means? On average, when they are listening to music, they can improve the quiz scores in A to 20 base points, given all these kind of control variables and many of the things I, I, I have been doing for this. Well, what I found, in the background questionnaire, I also had an open question. Uh, asking students to comment about the music, yeah? And the majority of the students, most of them, were commenting that the music was good, yeah? Realizing, it relaxed me, like it, like it, good idea, comfortable, calm, yeah? They really enjoyed the music. 
And sometimes they even nodded. Yeah, they mentioned, you know, uh, the music was there and I forgot about it. And I just pay attention. But there are some students, particular in the in the in the class about microeconomics A with the negative impact, yeah, that I showed before, that they mentioned that the problem was connected uh, was related with the microphone, with the volume, but overall there are troubles with the internet connection and the sound. And I'm thinking, and this is my assumption here, and talking with students, that this most probably is because of these internet connection concerns that in the class of microeconomics say they I, I did not find this positive evidence. I found more mixed results, uh, but was not a result of the music, but was a result of the problems with the connection and the problems with the with the internet. Therefore, as an overall conclusion, I can tell you that using binaural music uh, helped me to increase quizzes scores by eight to twenty base points. And I also can tell you and advise the use of this music as a didactic tool in the classroom, virtual or not, and also for students just to study, to get ready for an exam at home. I am still using the music in, in my classroom, and I can see in particular that when I have to lecture, when I have to explain theory, that it's highly useful to keep and maintain the attention of my students. And I will tell you that this is particularly relevant, at least in my country, and seems to me that many other countries for this post-millennial generation, because we know very well that this generation, because of devices, as smartphones and so on, they cannot pay attention to your lecture more than 20 minutes, yeah? And this music will be useful to, to keep and maintain attention of the students according with my results. Uh, thank you, gracias, espacio valchoe. Gracias. Uh, so, Dear colleagues, uh, if you have questions, please, you can raise hand or speak loud. No, I have one question, at least one, uh, that I would like to uh, ask. Um, maybe it's more like a comment. Uh, uh, in the design of your study, um, the uh, outcomes of your study is very sensitive to the approaches, how to measure these educational outcomes, like right. uh, this uh, microeconomics, microeconomics, uh, macroeconomics, and international economics. Uh, I have several questions in these uh, terms. Like, firstly, uh, you 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 have paid attention about quizzes, but can you just comment how what was uh, the quizzes? Who was the designer of these tests? Is it your like uh, your methodology, and how do you? Um, is it some stable approach to 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 measure uh, learning outcomes uh, and how com do you think uh, that uh, they are comparable uh, in terms of the different subjects that you uh, try to evaluate um, because maybe the tests are very different and in terms of time etc so can you comment please yes yes i got it as i mentioned i will not have time to mention all these details well, let me tell you, because I had troubles here. Yes, obviously, uh, this is my, I have been teaching this class for several years, and therefore I already had my, my questions, right? And therefore, with my colleagues, I was deciding what question to use and follow with the, the rules about the, these kind of questions, in the sense that the grammar is correct, that the question is clear, positive sense, all these recommendations, something that I was following for the selection of the question. Now, students have different background, and uh, probably was a problem for me because I was using different quality of questions depending on the group. The guys in microeconomics are just starting the career. They have a very basic knowledge about my uh, economics. And the guys in international economics, they are almost at the end of the career. They have a better knowledge of the economics. And therefore, I was using a more complicated quiz for students in international economics versus students in microeconomics. But my major concern is that in the case of microeconomics, I was using true false questions. Yeah, I was using three questions, and from these three questions, two questions are true false, and one question was multiple choice for options. In contrast with the guys in international economies, where I found more evidence, yeah, I was using uh, three questions with five different options and more complicated questions. Therefore, it could be that in the case of micro, just by chance, because it's 50 50, you will get right one of the questions. Obviously, it's not only one time. Yeah, I was using this 16 times. The, the quiz was 16 times in that case. So I had a lot of information about what is happening, but it is true. Just impossible because it was a, experiment, a natural experiment. Yeah, just later I was noting that was a mistake 
to use true false question in the quiz for microeconomic students. And that I should be using multiple choice. It's what I'm thinking now, because that could be also a reason for the mixed results in the case of the class of microeconomics A, that the quiz was uh, mm -hmm. using true false question. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you for this description, uh, colleagues. And mm -hmm. I'm using the music, and probably you didn't notice it because it's a very low volume to don't mm -hmm. distort what I'm telling you, but the music is here. Because actually it's like two songs that you could say, you don't know what is that, yeah? Sometimes my students at the end of the class, they noted and they say, hey, professor, come on, it was you, yeah? Because they only at the end noted that there was some kind of song that, that they, didn't, they didn't know what is happening. And just at the end, when they, I stopped the music, they can see that the music was there. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Now tell me that you had any other question. Uh, yeah, I have. I had one methodolo uh, question about the methodology. I I didn't get uh, if you control some background information about the students, yes. like maybe you have some questionnaire about socioeconomic background, etc. That is very important. Yes. At, at the very beginning of the of the semester, they answered a, an exam, yeah, a test about microeconomics, about microeconomics in the case of guys in international economies. And therefore, I'm using this result of the very beginning, the knowledge of the, at the very beginning. I, I explained, you know, we had an exam in this class. And you should know the answer. It's not difficult. So they just write to answer the exam. And I'm using the score in this exam at the very beginning of the semester to, as a control vero. Mm -hmm. And I'm also using the average grade point. They mm -hmm. reported the average grade point uh, overall or of subjects. And I'm also using something like that as a control vero. Mm -hmm. And okay. nevertheless, it seems that the music is helping. Mm -hmm. okay. Thank you very much. It is really a very interesting experiment. Uh, and I hope that you will publish the results and we'll have opportunity to make more. Uh, yeah. We have one more question. Yeah. Hello, uh, my name is Kate. I'm Daria. And I'm just curious. Um, uh, did uh, the treatment group uh, share their experience with uh, the control one? Because I think that's the thing to share with uh, your uh, classmates. And uh, what did, how did you deal with this? Okay. As in your case, I never mentioned that I was using the music. I asking you, just, I'm telling you just right now. Yeah. But with my students, I did not mention. Obviously, they not. But I am not the only one that sometimes is using music. There is another professor using music, but they're using more popular music just at the very beginning, start the music, and then you start your class. Yeah, because actually music is most popular than what we think. Therefore, students didn't know. I never mentioned something about the music. Just at the end of the second partial, when I was asking to, to give me the writing consent, to use the, the results of the quizzes and so on, then I explained what I was doing. And obviously, everybody noted, yeah? Everybody said, yes, Professor, I noted was the music. But for them at that moment was not uh, something very clear, as in your case. I mean, I'm, I'm telling you, I'm using the music, you didn't note it, depends, yeah? But they, in addition, was difficult that probably they are talking about that because they were at home. They were not in the same place. It could be that somebody mentioned to other students, you know, since to me, the Professor is in music, it could be. But when I was asking them, this is not in the background questionnaire, uh, it seems that was uh, more or less irrelevant that they didn't pay attention because actually what is happening with this music, and that's my advice for you, there is a link in the chat, yeah, and uh, you can Google. When you are using this music, after a few minutes, you will forget about the music. The music is there, but actually you will not uh, not the music anymore. And that is what is happening with the students. The music is there, they cannot the music in particular at the very beginning because of this, because of silence. And then later you forget about the music because you already got focus on what you are doing. That is intention of the music. And therefore, yes, it's possible that the students were talking about that. But in my opinion, nobody was thinking that I was using the music with the purpose to improve the, 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 the quiz score, things like that. That is what I'm thinking after I was talking with them about the music and what I was doing. Mm -hmm. it, it, it could be. That is true. It's a natural experiment. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, it is really very interesting. Uh, Thank you. So, yeah. Um, 
and we hope that you will have some opportunity to have more experiments uh, like this and uh, opportunity to to write papers <laughs> thank you so thank you. Uh, sure.